So with the Dragon Ball Heroes anime on the horizon, it's opened up so many doors for fans to enjoy Dragon Ball Heroes content more so than ever before. And I know some people have been looking at the promotional poster for the Prison Planet arc, and on the very top of the poster, you see, clearly, Super Saiyan 4 Goku versus Super Saiyan Blue. And I know some people are wondering, wait a minute, why are there two Gokus? It's like I always wanted to see Blue versus 4, but why are there two Gokus in the same time space? Well, on this video, I'm going to give you an explanation of Zeno Goku, his origin, where he came from, and what his place is in Dragon Ball Heroes. Let's get to it next. What's going on everyone? If you like the videos I'm putting out on this channel, remember to hit that like button. And remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell, that way you get all my content right to your device every time I upload. And I thank you for your continued support. So those of you who are looking to find out more about Dragon Ball Heroes and learn more about the lore of this great video game universe, I've created a playlist over on Geekdom 101 for you to check out some of the older videos I've done for the past three years, which cover some topics that I find very interesting about the lore, the characters, and the storyline of Dragon Ball Heroes. So, why are there two Gokus fighting? Why are there even two Gokus? Well, the thing you have to understand first and foremost about Heroes is that Dragon Ball Heroes storylines are often based on alternate timelines, very much like Xenoverse. The Supreme Kai of Time is there, the Time Patrol is there, you know, the elements of Xenoverse that many of you are familiar with are already in this game, but they take it to a whole new level. So, who is Zeno Goku or Goku Zeno, Zeno Goku. Well, another name for him is also Time Patrol Goku. And one thing we have to make clear is that Time Patrol Trunks from the video games is not the same Trunks from Dragon Ball Super. So the way that Dragon Ball Heroes is structured is that there are literally tons and tons of different continuities. So everything... I hate to use this word, but everything is canon. They borrow little bits and pieces from different universes and different alternate timelines to create this huge hodgepodge of just Dragon Ball insanity, right? So imagine the events of GT happen in one timeline, then the events of Super happen in another timeline. But they're not necessarily timelines in the same way that they are in the Dragon Ball main continuity. They're just different sort of continuities that all converge in the video game world, which is why it's best to just have fun with it and not overthink it. A lot of the elements in this game are purely for fan service purposes. So what is the origin of Zeno Goku? Is he from the Super timeline, the GT timeline? The answer is he's not really from either one. Dragon Ball Heroes is filled with tons of what-if scenarios and what-if timelines, and that's what Goku Zeno is. The origin of Time Patrol Goku really started with the Dark Demon Realm saga in the Dragon Ball Heroes manga, where what happens is that the demon god Demigra, yes, the same one from Xenoverse 1, appears at the Time Nest, and the Supreme Kai of Time tries to manifest a warrior to help her combat against Demigra, so she goes into Trunks' memories, Zeno Trunks' memories, and pulls out Zeno Goku to help Zeno Trunks. So, Zeno Goku's timeline is, again, an alternate story where, in this version of the events, the Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT stories all happen, but with some twists. For example, Goku in this timeline has Super Saiyan 4, but at one point he actually taps into Super Saiyan God. So the reason that he is seen as one of the strongest Gokus ever, why Trunks sees him as that, is because what we have here is we have a character that has the ability to tap into Super Saiyan 4, but also has God Key. So just imagine the kind of power that this Goku has. I mean, it's ridiculously strong. Now, in this timeline, Goku did not sacrifice himself against Cell. Instead, what happens is the events of the Buu Saga do take place, including the Fusion Reborn movie. It's all in that same continuity, but instead he gets killed by Toa at one point. Later on, he comes back to life. Now, again, a lot of this stuff is just fan service. They didn't really put too much thought into it. I find it interesting, but don't try to make sense of this because all of these what-if scenarios don't really make much sense when you actually put a lot of logical you know, thought into them. It's just stuff they came up with for the game. It's not really something that is that logical. It's just 
wacky fan service. But either way, this version of Goku is very, very powerful. So much like Time Patrol Trunks, Time Patrol Goku or Goku Zeno is a guy who goes back in time to fix Mira and Toa screwing around with the timeline. There's a part where demon god Toa goes back in time and upgrades Frieza with the Dark Dragon Balls. And this happens during the Namek Saga, and Super Saiyan Goku at that time just could not handle that kind of power. So Goku Zeno had to go back in time and save Dragon Ball Z Goku from this new threat. So you've got different Gokus teaming up together to make sure the timeline doesn't get screwed up. I mean, if you've played Xenoverse, you know about this kind of stuff. Later on, there's another mission where... Time Patrol Vegeta, Time Patrol Goku, and Time Patrol Trunks go back and fix the problems that the Dark Army had tried to instill in the Boo Saga. And this is where we first see Time Patrol Vegito or Vegito Zeno. And they were able to successfully defeat Majin Buu uh, and fix the timeline, at least that particular timeline. The storylines involving Zeno Goku really are mostly kind of the same thing. Mira and Toa are going back in time, and what they're doing throughout the different eras of Dragon Ball and different timelines is they're giving the established villains this dark Dragon Ball upgrade. They did it with Frieza, with Boo, with Broly, where they take the Black Star Dragon Balls and they figure out a way to harness the negative energy in them and they put them in their chest to kind of give them this huge power boost. And again, the concept is cool as hell in my opinion. I love that and it's kind of a unique twist as to what Mira and Toa were doing in Xenoverse. So what happens in the Prison Planet arc of Dragon Ball Heroes, which may actually be what gets adapted very, very soon. Well, what happens is, and I've covered this in my History of Few video, Few is going around different timelines and different universes and different eras, gathering together the strongest fighters that he can to do experiments on. So Goku, Zeno Goku, runs into the main timeline Dragon Ball Super Goku. Now, it's made unclear as to which part of Super this Goku belongs to. We're not sure if this is after the Tournament of Power or before. We're not really sure exactly when this Goku, like where he comes from in the Super timeline. So Time Patrol Goku runs into Dragon Ball Super Goku and they have a fight. And here we see Time Patrol Goku transforming into Super Saiyan 4. And we're actually told before this that he is forbidden from using this transformation because it could end up screwing around the timeline. There's no actual reason given as to why, but that's what we're told. And he uses his SS4 power, and then Goku from the Super Timeline goes into Super Saiyan Blue. Now understand, Time Patrol Goku, Zeno Goku, has never seen Blue. For some reason, he was able to tap into God form at one point, but he never saw Blue. And it's not really explained why. Maybe it's because he felt like 4 was an efficient enough form. Maybe he never trained with Beerus and Whis, which I think is pretty much implied that he never did, to learn how to master his God key. So, Zeno Goku is shocked that his counterpart is even stronger than him. So, yes, in the Prison Planet arc... Super Saiyan Blue Goku beats Super Saiyan 4 Zeno Goku. Some people have had a problem with this. I didn't write this freaking game. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just the messenger. And the reality is, in the storyline, Goku Zeno loses. But either way, you have to understand, even though he was defeated by Blue Goku, he still put up a great fight. And it just goes to show that Super Saiyan 4, with that little bit of God key that he had, because he can do both a 10 times Kamehameha and a God Kamehameha. He has the ability to do both of them. It's still really strong and it really makes you wonder if they did do like a hybrid story where you have both forms like God and Four working together, what kind of real power Goku can tap into. The ideas are just mind-bogglingly cool if you ask me. And if you like fan service, in the manga, there is a three-way fight between Time Patrol Goku, Mira, like the fused Mira, the the Mira with Toa absorbed from Xenoverse 2, and Super Saiyan 4 Dark Broly. Yeah, it's kind of much, to be honest with you. It's a lot. But yeah, to wrap this up, Zeno Goku is just an alternate timeline version of Goku at the end of GT, with the ability to tap into God Key, and he is, other than that, the same sort of background as the main timeline Goku. You know, he's got the same parents, he had the same story arcs, except that 
after GT, presumably, is when things got a little weird. Plus, there were some small differences here and there, like the whole thing I said about the Boo Saga and things like that. Again, people mistakenly say it's the same Goku from the end of GT, but it's really not. It's a different timeline Goku. Again, it's just like how in the comics you have different Superman and alternate timeline versions of different characters, like alternate universes. It's the same thing with Zeno Goku, otherwise known as, you know... Time Patrol Goku. And I'm pronouncing it Zeno. You can pronounce it Zeno or Zeno. It's X-E-N-O, like Xenoverse, which is where the idea came from. So no matter how you want to pronounce it, same thing, Time Patrol Goku. Anyways, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell and set it to always get notifications. YouTube has been trash lately with this. Spread this video out to those who may not know anything about Zeno Goku. And I'll be doing more of these because I find these storylines really interesting. And if you guys like the videos, I'll keep dropping them. And don't forget about that Dragon Ball Heroes playlist that I made so you can catch up on a bunch of stuff that you may not know about. So thank you. Hope you have a great day. And I'll catch y'all down the road.